I have to say, Hilda Ogden's got a point. It's a bit raw, Malik doing a vanishing act at all. For the umpteenth time he hasn't vanished, he's gone off on private business. Picks his moments, doesn't he? When there's no one in charge here. Uh, there is somebody in charge, Lady Me. And so far, everything's run pretty smooth, right, Jacko? Right, Blondie. Maybe so far. I must say, the brassy tart who's just walked in looks like trouble on leg. And I live and breathe! Ah! You better believe it, kid. Bet's back with bells on, so stand by for action. Me and my fiance are really going to make this joint home. Did she say what I thought she said? She did. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Dead right, love. And is the best call of it. Thank you. It's very kind. Bye, dear Kilda. The way your little antenna's working, it must be. Yes, Hilda, I'm afraid your congratulations are in order. What are you having, Bob? Oh, well, if you insist, a pot and lemon, please. Celebrate the happy occasion. Oh, where is she? How did she look? What did she say? Unpacking, tanned, I'm engaged. Well, this is a bit of a turn up, Alec. Even for a sly old dog like you, eh? Well, it's been simmering away for the past few months on the back burner. Let's say I just stirred the pot a bit and brought it to the boil. Not a bad little deal, that. Bet gets the status you always wanted, and you get a cushy little pad for life. There's no deal about it. I'm very fond of the lady. Oh, no one's doubting that, mate. No one's doubting that. But tell us, just between us fellas, if you can't get the brewery to forgive and forget, do you get the ring back? <laughs> hey, girl. You get yourself into some right situation. You're right, love. They're all asking where you are. Oh, just tidy myself up a bit. Can't go round looking grotty with this on my finger, can I? It's lovely, Beth. Yeah? Not bad, is it? Cost him a pretty pesetra, too. I expect he thinks you're worth it. Oh, I got something for you. Oh. Didn't have much time, so I got it in the duty-free shop. Oh, Beth, thanks. Oh, you shouldn't have. I got some uh, right sexy aftershave for Jack or and all. Get Vera going and serve him right. <laughs> Listen, kid. I owe you a lot more than a bottle of scent, the way I landed you all in it with my vanishing lady act. Did say you had your reasons? I just found myself walking past this travel agent's. There was a board outside saying cheap flights to Malaga. Almost the next thing I knew I was on the plane. Everyone's got the breaking point. But you should have told us you were having problems. Poor old Betty, especially. Well, you know how motherly she is. She felt she'd let you down in some way. Yeah. How is Betty? Not poorly, I hope. I noticed she got a temp in. Um, no. No, she's fine. Oh, bet I am glad to see you <laughs> back and all in one piece. Back with bells on, kiddo. Yeah, not to mention a ring. Yeah, well, a girl can't go play in the field all her life, can she? As long as you're happy. Oh, I'm over the moon, kid. Well, what's happy, any road? Ecstatic, madly in love, I'm not. I gave up believing in that a long time since. But he's not a bad bloke, Glow. He looks after me. That's something I've never had. Is it enough, though? It has to be, doesn't it? Them's the cards I've been dealt. And I don't mind admitting things look a lot rosier now than they did this time last week. Thanks to himself. Look, he's even going to straighten things out with Newton and Ridley. Look, if you repeat this, lady, I'll scalp every blonde hair off that pretty little head of yours. If I were them, I'd tell me to get lost. And Alec really thinks he can talk them round. Well, so he says. And at least he's willing to go in there and do battle for me. It's quite romantic, really. Well, I'm sure he's very fond of you. <laughs> he came all that way looking for you. For me and his cash. Not that I blame him. He's been brought up in the same school of life as what I have. The tough one. Makes us birds of a feather. Hey, maybe it will be a marriage made in heaven after all. Hey, cock. To thank you one and all for holding the fort in my absence. Don't mention it, boss. Just put a little bit of something extra in the pay packets. We'll call it quits. <laughs> Give over, Jack. No, he's only kidding. We were glad to help out, weren't we? Oh, I absolutely any time. No need to go over the top, Jack. No, I just wanted you to know that your support is not entirely unappreciated. By both of us, you've played a blinder. We've not met Cock. Bet Lynch. Dare say you've heard of me. Margot Richardson. Yeah, I've heard of you. You used to be landlady here. And hope to be again, my dear. Oh, I doubt that. 
Alex's boss now. Well, let's put it this way, dear. Alex's been holding the fort for me while I've been away. Isn't that right, sweetheart? We're just in the process of sorting things out with the brewery, Margot. Not that it's any concern of a temporary barmaid. Where she got this temporary stuff? There's one or two things I've got to fill you in on yet, Bet. So it seems, Alec. All right, sir. Uh, I think it's time you lot were off. Right. See you tonight. Bye. See you tonight. Oh, yeah. See you tonight. Alec. With Betty gone, I had to get somebody in to do the food. Margot's OK. How do you mean, with Betty gone? Well, let's say we had a little chat and decided it was for the best. Don't worry about her. She's perfectly happy at home looking after her moggy. Where are you going? To find Betty. To find out for myself. Nothing to find out. She's fine. It's you and me I want to talk about. Yes, I think you're right. We have got one or two things to sort out at that. Now, don't get aggressive with me, Bet, after what I've done for you. Like what? Apart from getting shut of one of my best mates the minute my back was turned. Now, that's not fair, and you know it. I've kept this place going. I've kept Newton and Ridley sweet. I came all the way out to Spain and fetched you back in style. Instead of crawling in with your tail between your legs, as you said yourself, you were able to come through those doors with all flags flying. Knock the stuffing out of them, you did. Yeah, I did. Talk about gobsmacked. Right. So, what about the next step? Yeah, you're right. I still have to face that brewery. Flashing my engagement ring won't sidetrack them so easily, will it? That can wait. I'm not talking about the brewery. I'm talking about us. Getting married. How does next week sound? Ridiculous. Why, well, we've nothing to wait for. You get a special license. Alec. I have never been married before, and if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it proper. Well, yeah, that's all right. We'll have a bit of a party afterwards, invite a few mates. A proper wedding, Alec. I don't mean in church. I may even wear white. I may even have bridesmaids. I may even have a choir singing, all oh, perfect love, as we walk down the aisle. I may even, for once in my life, do something normal, like every other woman does. Uh, Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Cheers. He went to all that trouble and you give the poor lad the cold shoulder. I don't like being manipulated, Bet. If you mean like me, you're dead wrong, kid. I'm going into this with my eyes wide open. I just thought I'd make the point. At our age, it gets harder to weather the disasters. You have made the point. <laughs> Telling you about her fiasco, was she? That's right. Isn't it? I told you she's not thank you for sticking your neb in, didn't I? Oh, come on. So probably we're going to pictures before it starts. Hang on. I'll get that. Hello? Oh. oh, hello. Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, fine. Uh, tomorrow at 12, then. And thanks for returning me call so promptly, Cecil. I just thought, you know, the sooner we get things regularised, the better. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. And thanks again. Goodbye. Cecil Newton was that? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I just left a message at his office that I wanted to see him. You're quite right. The sooner we get down there and straighten things out, the better. I think this is one you ought to leave to me, Bet. It's going to require a bit of delicate negotiation. How do you think they'll take it? I mean, I'm not exactly the blue-eyed girl no more. They might tell us both to get knotted. Bet, sweetheart, stop worrying. You've got a chap to lean on now, remember? Just trust Alec, eh? I still think I should be going as well. I feel like I'm hiding away in here. That's ridiculous. But why? You're going to the brewery to talk about the tenancy of this pub. So? So? Who was the last tenant till she did a moonlight flit? Well, you were, we know that. So, why aren't I going down there with you? Because it would be bad tactics. They'll think I don't face them. They'll think I'm sending you to do me dirty work because I'm too scared to go in that office and have it out with them. Oh, bet that's ridiculous. They don't even know you're here. As far as they're concerned, you're still over in Spain. No, but when you tell them I'm here, they'll think it then. Oh, for God's sake. Listen, what are we after? We are after the tenancy of this pub. To be held in my name, but exercised jointly between both of us as man and wife, right? Yeah. So let's be cunning, shall we? Let's be crafty about it. They'll think I'm ashamed. Oh, fine. Does it matter what they think as long as we get the flaming tenancy? It matters to me, yeah. All right, then. All right, afterwards. Wait until afterwards. You can walk in and out of their office to your heart's content. It won't matter a damn. But just for now, we don't want to go upsetting or aggravating them. I mean, now I'm in their good books, or I should be, for all the services I've done them of late. Whereas you... I am listed as highly undesirable. Yeah, so it's important that I'm the one that goes to see him. 
I mean, I'll mention your involvement in things, of course I will, but at the right moment. Aye, when you think they're not listening. Oh, for God's sake, Bet, trust me, will you? I still feel like I'm copping out. Well, you're not. Just stay there, keep your fingers crossed, and wait for the good news. Yeah. Yes, you're here, you? Everybody happy? Hi. Right, I'm just nipping out to do a bit of business. I'm not sure when I'll be back. All right, fine. No problem, boss. Is it uh, all right if I do the living room now, Mr. Gilder? Yes, yeah, certainly, Hilda. <laughs> so that's the fact, is it, Hilda? He's off down on a brewery to get this tenancy sorted. Eh? That's my information. Well, you heard him just now. Got a bit of business. Not sure when he'll be back. <laughs> not sure how he'll be back neither. As tomorrow's landlord or yesterday's standing. <laughs> I suppose we should hope to give him the tenancy, shouldn't we? For Bet's sake. Aye, then she'll wed him, and what's his will be hers. Well, yeah. I could uh, go and do some shopping for you if you don't feel like going out. I've not lost the use of my legs, Hilda. No, but just thought you might prefer to keep yourself to yourself for a bit. I keep the blinds drawn and refuse to answer the door. Well, must be some folk you'd sooner not bump into. If I'd have wanted to avoid folk, Hilda, all I had to do was stop where I were in Spain. Oh, I dare say, yeah. Mm. You're uh, not exactly rushing round to Newton and Ridley's, though, are you? No. I suppose Mr Gilroy's handling all that side of things, is he? I suppose he is, yes. Yeah, well, you do right to let him. You keep your head down till it's all blown over. Do you think you could knit me a balaclava, Hilda? So I could go out without being recognised? Well, I dare say. <laughs> we'll have your little joke. You must have guessed why I'm here, Cecil, so I'll not mince my words. A mincer of words you never were, Alec. No. I just cannot see any reason why this brewery should be dragging its feet over offering me the tenancy of the Rovers. Speaking frankly, Cecil. Oh, but we're not. Not what? Dragging us feet. There's a board meeting this afternoon, and item five on the agenda is that very point. Offering me the tenancy? Offering uh, somebody the tenancy. Oh, now, come on. It might be you. You're certainly on the list. Along with uh, one or two others. I trust I'm not only just on the list. I trust I'm very firmly at the top of it. Uh, yes. Um, have you heard from Bet Lynch lately? Bet? Lynch? Previous tenant? Have you not heard? Uh, uh, yes, yes, she's, uh, she's at the Rovers now, as it happens, uh, as a guest. Really? So she's back, then? Uh, yes, uh, just... Uh, yes. And how is she? Is she well? Oh, fine. <laughs> well enough. But, but listen, Cess, I mean, I took over that pub when you were desperate. I mean, not you personally, but I mean the brewery. And I did it in the belief that Newton and Ridley would see me right when the time came. Now, you're not going to let me down, surely? Cess. Oh, Alec, it's not just me. There's the rest of the board. Accountants, legal men, some who'd like to see the back of me if they could. Oh, <laughs> never mind you. Look, I said I wouldn't mince my words. Are you going to back my case or not? I'll, uh, I'll see your case gets a fair hearing. Of course I will. Well, in that case, let me spell it out for you. If you must. Now, to start with, it was my money that got Beth into the tenancy of that place. And secondly, she... You can make notes if you like. No need. It's all up here. Yes, thank you. Well, it seems we're to have an unexpected guest. Yes, but have I made myself clear, Cecil? I mean, quite frankly, you seem to have been hardly listening half the time. You are... Oh, yes, of course I was listening. Uh, come in, my dear. I'm sorry to come barging in. Bet. Uh, no, we'd uh, finished what we were talking about, hadn't we? Well, uh, and you're looking wonderful, my dear. Uh, do sit down. Uh, thank you. I had to come and see you. I explained to Alec, didn't I? I well, had to uh, come and uh, see you, look you in the face and say, I'm sorry. Oh, water under the bridge. Well, no. You let me have that tenancy and I let you down. I've no excuses, so I'm not going to try and invent any. I was daft in the way I tried to manage and then I panicked when I found out I couldn't. I'm so sorry. Accepted. Now, I think the whole episode's best forgotten. Well, I didn't want you thinking I'd sent Alec to do me dirty work for me. I mean, we're not even wed yet, are we? Wed? What, you... You mean you're going... Has he not said? What's up with you? Are you ashamed of me or something? <laughs> no, no. I, 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 was going, I was going to mention it. Well, you're a dark horse and no mistake. The lady departs for Spain, you kick up a fuss about your money, and now you tell me you're marrying her. Hey, 
We must drink to this. Uh, one moment while I organise it. Oh, <laughs> now that's nice. <laughs> I told you not to come. Well, I'm sorry, Alec. I had to. I just had to. Well, you've blown it. I mean, you realise that, don't you? I mean, you ruined both our chances. Well, he seems all right. Oh, don't you believe it. I told you to stay well away. <clears throat> On its way. Oh. I'm sorry. It's too late for being sorry. I just had to. Yeah, so you've said. Well, it's true. But, I mean, what timing? I mean, what wonderful, immaculate timing. I mean, there I am, stating my case, priming Cecil for his board meeting, trying to present him with the prospect of sound reliability and good financial management, and what happens? I walk in. Yeah, and put him in mind of everything we wanted him to forget. Thank you. Oh, God, bet why? I told you, Alec. I already faced up to you when you turned up in Spain. And then I came back, I faced up to the staff and the customers... And to finish it off, I felt I had to face up to the brewery and all. At what price, though? I mean, all right, a brave gesture, a far, far better thing and all that. But, I mean, have you thought what it's going to cost us? Well, I don't see why. I thought Cecil seemed pleased to see me. Oh, he seemed pleased because he's a gentleman, isn't he? He wouldn't show us the door there and then. Yeah, and kiss goodbye to that tenancy, I can tell you that for nothing. He said it wasn't up to him. He said it was up to the board. Yeah, well, technically speaking, it is, of course, but they'll follow his recommendations. And all you had to do was to stay out of sight for another few hours. Well, happened. I'm still glad I went. Oh, good, good. And what happened? Well, if the board have met and they say, we can't have this pub, will you, will you marry me then? Oh, don't ask me that. It's got to be faced. Not yet. Not till I have to. Okay, we'll wait for the verdict then. And when we've got it, I'll ask you the same question again, shall I? A good help. Bet. Yeah, sure you won't. No, not just now. Well, to business then. We had our board meeting this afternoon and the question of the tenancy was raised. Now, Alec, I know you wanted that tenancy. You made it very clear. As I had every right to. Oh, but see, to my mind, you're a businessman and entrepreneur. You're not exactly a mine host. Oh, I'm not, have I? Oh, I'm sure you could make a stab at it, but I don't think it comes natural. I see. And then you came to see me today and, well, I didn't change my opinion. Not really. And then, lo and behold, Bet turned up. I think I will have that drink. And she tells me you're getting married and it's to be a partnership. And all my qualms, suddenly, they've vanished. Because this lady, your wife-to-be, would grace any bar in the kingdom. Well, 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 yes, yes. I have a dream, you know. I have a dream where Newton and Ridley have a bet lynch in every one of their licensed premises uh, with somebody else to keep an eye on the financial side. I should hope so. So, so, so what you're saying is... What you're saying is... What exactly are you saying, Sess? Well, the tenancy is yours. Oh, yes, no question. Is it? Yes, the... Did I not make that clear? Uh, not entirely, no. But that's marvellous. I mean, thanks a lot, Cecil. And thanks for your support. And your pleas, my dear. Oh, yes. I wouldn't ever want to leave this place ever again. Oh, there's no reason why you ever should. Ta-da! How about that, then, eh? We did it. We finally got the tenancy. Oh, yes. Well, fancy going out. I feel like celebrating, don't you, painting the town? Not until I get an apology, no. An apology? What for? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose I did slightly misread the situation. You are? You made out that I was a liability. That the only contribution I could make was to stop out of sight and keep my mouth shut. And what is worse, you had me believe in it and all. Yeah, well, it's all turned out for the best, though. And why? Why has it all turned out for the best? Well, you know, because of you know, the partnership. We partnership, my eye. You heard Cecil on about his dreams. Ah, oh, well, he always has had a poetic turn of phrase. He is giving you that tenancy because of me. Not you. Me. I walked into that office in the nick of time when you were struggling and getting nowhere fast. Right? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because of you. I mean, yes, I know, I see that now. Thank you. But listen, I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. I mean, I, th I just thought I was doing the best for both of us. You believe that, I hope. Go on, then. We did do it, though, didn't we, eh? I mean, no matter how, no matter how I nearly made a cock-up of it, we did get that tenancy. I know. 
And I do feel like celebrating. Let's go out. Ah, any way you like, as long as it's expensive. <laughs> and uh, now that it's settled... What? Well, there's nothing stopping us, is there? Getting married, I mean. Oh, no. Oh, come on. How about naming the day? Yeah. Make inquiries. As soon as you like. Now, that is good news. <laughs> Well, he might have brought them through, Jack. Eh? Hey? The hot pots. You do realise, do you, they've probably already started defrosting. Well, isn't that what's supposed to happen to them? I mean, before folks start eating them, that is. Well, yes, only generally speaking, usually on the day you were thinking of warming them up. If you want to avoid mass food poisoning. Come on, out of the way. Good morning, Margaret, love. Is it still? Feels more like the middle of the afternoon to me, love. And that's what passes for wit these days, is it, gang? What? Something like a rape in us, our Margot. I can see she has. They didn't by any chance bring any gravy granules as well, did they? Would this be what you're looking for, Margot? Yes, that's it, thanks. Hello. It's not the stuff we usually use, is it? No, it isn't. Had a change, have another. Well, you know what that other muck was like. I mean, you could be stirring it for half an hour and you'd still have more lumps in it than a flock mattress. So I did point it out to Alec, and the way he saw it for a couple of bob extra, it was worth going for the better stuff. I mean, if it's going to keep our punters happy, I think he's quite right, don't you? I mean, after all, he is the boss. How very true, Margot. See you both later. All right. Right, Beth. Do you know something? All of a sudden, them two remind me of something. Oh, yeah? Ah, uh, two express trains travelling towards one another, both on the same stretch of track. And uh, which one of them's your money on, then? Same one as yours, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, that's what I like to hear this time of the morning. The happy laughter of my staff just bursting to get stuck in. Morning, Alec. Good morning, Gloria. And how are you this fine morning, Jack? All right. Rushing around as usual, I see, and finding useful jobs for those idle little hands of yours. I was just about to go down the cellar and change a couple of barrels this very minute. Though you would probably find it very hard to believe. You're right, Jack, I would, and I don't. But since you've brought up the subject, don't let me hold you up any more than you already have been. Nice day for it. For what, though, Alec? That's the question, isn't it? Watch your back! Oh, sorry, Margaret. <laughs> Hey, what a little treasure you found for us, Alec, with that one. I think so, dear. I do, Alec, yes. Excuse me. Certainly, Marla. All right, what's up with her, then? There's nothing up with her, Alec. I think she's very good. In fact, I think she's an inspiration to us all. But? Well, don't you get a funny feeling sometimes behind this bar? Funny feeling. Hmm. The same sort of feeling you get in a lift, love. When you know there's just one too many in there for comfort. All right, Beth, what are you trying to say? You want me to get shut? Alec, love, it's not for me to tell you what to do. Only it is you that's always impressing on me how important it is to be businesslike in these matters, right? Well, right. Right. So as businessmen, what we should be asking ourselves is this. Wonderful as Margot is. Can we really afford to keep her on, do you think, now that I'm back? Right, I'm off then. See you tonight. All uh, right, all of So, have you told her yet? Not yet. But you are going to? Yes, I suppose so. Then what are we waiting for? I quite honestly don't know why you've got your knife into her all of a sudden. Alec, for the last time, this is not personal. No? No. My one and only concern in this unhappy business is helping you to get this pub back onto its proper footing again. Which we certainly can't do if we're over staff now, can we? Well, I'll believe you thousands wouldn't. And that's what's important, Alec, love. What you believe. And don't think that I don't sympathise, because I do. Oh, yes. But of course. Who knows better than me? How hard it can be sometimes to make those tough decisions. But then again, 
I suppose it goes with the territory, when it's your name that's up over that lintel. I'll send her through, shall I tell you, you'd like a word? You know, they probably have women like you back in the days of the French Revolution. Rows of bet lynches sat there knitting while their heads were rolling, never dropping so much as a stitch. My love. Yeah? I think Alec wants you. Oh, yeah? Maybe to it, sweetie. Thanks. Yes, Alec? Margot. Uh, could, could, could I first of all say how very much I, at least, appreciate the way you've got stuck in these past few weeks? Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, what a wonderful world it would be if there were more people like you about. Uh, believe me, Margot, nobody's going to be more sorry than I am to lose you. They really won't. Lose me? For the time being, at any road. Now that Bet's back, you see, you what you might call surplus to staff requirements, you see. Hello. I wondered how long it would take her. Her? Uh, who? Madam, in there, to start getting at you about me. Excuse me, Margot, nobody's been got out of. There's only one gaffer here, and you happen to be talking to him. Of course there is. And on a good day, our Dalmatian sings Land of Hope and Glory in Yiddish. I, I can quite understand you being a bit upset, Margot. Upset? Oh, I'm not upset, Alec. You're not? Good Lord, no. I mean, after all, I've only nearly broken me back for you. While you're floozy and there's been waddling about Europe just one step ahead of the police, so what could I possibly have to be upset about? Now, now just a moment, Margot. I'll thank you to remember that flu. That lady you're referring to just happens to be my future wife. Lady? That one? My God, Alec, but if you've had her down for a lady, love, you must want your glasses changing. All right. I think we've heard enough, thank you. I take it I'm right in thinking that this rag I found hanging up in my kitchen belongs to you? It does. Well, then get it on and get out before this lady decides to forget her manners and wrap it round your scrawny little neck. Oh! All right, Alec, love. You will be able to cope without us, will you, for half an hour tomorrow? Yeah, of course. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Why would she have to do that? Because, my love, that is when we're going to see the vicar. Vicar? The Reverend Rawlinson. And why would we have to see him? To have a chat, of course. And why would I want to chat with a vicar? Oh, they always want to chat with you, Alec. You know, the vicar who actually marries you. Oh, yeah, you know, in case you've got any doubts about the birds and bees, that sort of thing. Oh, yes, very funny. This is supposed to be a joke, but it's an extremely tasteless one. I've told him we'll be there, Alec. Wednesday, two o'clock sharp. Is it? You surprised me. Oh, come on, that's my way to start the day. I wish I could finish it as good. Well, I thought it was today you and Bet were going to see the vicar. And what's that? Something to dance its streets about? It's a step in the right direction. Is it? Listen, young lady, in spite of what you might think, I happen to have very strong beliefs. What, like do the rest of them before they do you? Amongst others, yes. All I'm saying is, I'm not a non-believer, but I wouldn't be a tuppence for your organised religion. I've only got to look what's happening in the world, haven't you? All the wars. Protestants and Catholics, Christians and Muslims, Hindus and what do you call them? Tamils. Yeah, hey, you see, even you know that. It's high time these religious johnnies got off their backside and sorted that lot out. Kept the noses out of ordinary folks' business. You know why they like marrying people, don't you? Because we pay them. You're going to tell the vicar that? That's the way I feel. I just might. Alec, your tea's ready. Won't be a minute. You never spoke a true word. You won't be a minute because it's ready now. We've got a lot to do this morning. It's the church we're going to. Not when you grotty little nightclubs. But I would dull myself up for. Come on. It's going cold. If I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Just get in there and get some work done. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a bit smart, that. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, and you look nice, too. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. It shouldn't be long, Gloria. We're just going to Old Saints. See the vicar. You don't have to tell the world. <laughs> How else will they find out? You don't have to flame in, no. I was expecting a less mature couple. You have a very young voice over the telephone. Oh, that's nice to know. Now, one or two questions. Is this your first marriage? Well, it is for me. 
Mind you, I've had any chances. Yes, I'm sure you have. <laughs> and Mr. Gilroy? No, oh, I've tried it before. Just the ones. I see. Uh, and is the first Mrs. Gilroy uh, deceased? Mm-hmm. Lord, if I know, she could be. Mm. Oh, you're, uh... Divorced, yes. Does that mean I don't need to get married in church? Well, it might in some churches, but not, I'm glad to say, in mine. I consider myself more enlightened. Oh. I mean, you're sure now? I mean, I wouldn't want to... Yes, uh, I'm know... quite sure, Mr. Gilmore. Although I feel a little chat about your attitude towards the church might be helpful. Over a cup of tea, perhaps. Behave yourself. Well, you should make some commitment to the church. Attend a couple of services, perhaps, before the happy day. Get the lie of the land. I mean, it wouldn't do to get lost on your way to the altar. Yes, we will, Vicar. Uh, we could manage Sunday, couldn't we? Could we? Ah, I suppose so. The vicar isn't busy. How do you mean? Well, he might be sorting his lot out in Belfast, mightn't he? Uh, bare root. What are you talking about? I think I'm being criticised, Miss Lynch. And not for the first time, nor without some justification. Although there's not a lot we can do about it. Perhaps we might debate it sometime. Yes, of course, we're both very busy men. Now, how about the date? I doubt I have a free Saturday until November. Oh, a weekday will be fine. Oh. As soon as you like. Right then, what about um, September the 9th? It's a Wednesday. 2 p.m., shall we say? Lovely. You yeah, couldn't make it after 3, could you? Only we served till then. Yes, of course. I've quite forgotten. 4 p.m. the same day, in deference to your parishioners. Yes, that's fine. Uh, no. Leave it at two. It's only the one day. Okay, suit yourself. Right then, it's uh, back to two o'clock. Well, it's been a great pleasure to meet you. Uh, hopefully I shall see you again on Sunday. Oh, you will, Vicar. You will. Goodbye. 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 Just wait till I get you warm. I made my point. Elder. What? You aren't by any chance auditioning, are you? How do you mean? Well, the singing or animal impressions, whatever it is. Is it for my benefit? Because if it is, just give it a rest and we'll ring you. I've been told I've got a very nice voice. Have you? Well, whoever said that, don't ever buy a used car from them. Just let's have a bit of us, shall we? I've got a very worrying few days ahead of me. Is, um, is Beck moving out before the wedding? Why do you ask so many questions? Oh, pardon me for breathing. I can't sing, I can't ask questions. How else do I get to know anything if I don't ask questions? What do you want to know for? Well, because I'm interested. You wouldn't want me to think now about you, would you? Elder, I accept my apologies. Hmm. I should think so, or no. And, er... Uh, for your ears only, neither of us are moving out. I'm supposed to stay, you see, because my name's over the door. And I don't want to put Bet to a load of trouble because of some daft superstition. No, well, I think you're very wise. I mean, it's not as though you're cohabitating, is it? Not as though we're what? Cohabitating, you know, like these daft kids do nowadays. Living like man and wife without benefit of clergy. It's not as though you're doing that. And um, how do you know we're not, Hilda? How do I know? Who is it makes the beds? Hey, bye, Hilda. You keep me on my toes. Yes, well, it's something I've always said. If God's blessed you with grey matter, you're daft if you don't use it. I am not tight-fisted. Just look at that lot. That's what I object to, being ripped off. Look at them cars. Glorified taxis with a couple of yards of white ribbon and it's double the price. Look, flowers. You're paying ten quid for a square foot of silver paper. You're determined to make this a day to forget, aren't you? Of course I am. A day to what? You heard. Anyway, we've not finished yet. What are you wearing? My grey stripe. What do you think I'm wearing? A track suit ready for the off? No, but I do want you in a suit, a morning suit. So get yourself off to Manchester. Oh, now, come on, Bet. I mean, have I got the figure for a morning suit? I look like Rumpole of the Bailey on a bad day. And even if they did make me look good, I don't want to upstage you now, do I? Well, we'll leave that for now. What about the honeymoon? Have you done out about that? Or have you kicked that into touch and all? I have definitely not kicked it into touch, no. Although, I mean, we did have those romantic few days on the Costa del Sol. Do you remember? They don't count, Alec. <laughs> no, but I was just thinking they'd take a bit of eating, that's all. We'll have a damn good try. And we will succeed, my sweet, we will succeed. 
Portugal, right? Lord above is remembered. Yeah, but not immediately after the wedding. I mean, uh, these things take a bit of planning, you know, the holiday itself and then relief stuff and so on. But as soon as we've got that sorted out, we are off to the sunny Algarve. Come on, 